The FIVB Beach Volleyball World Tour has come to Brazil as the planet's best battle it out for glory. And up next, it's bronze medal action right here in Itapema. Be going home. Up next, it's the bronze medal match from the women's events as the Netherlands look to take on Canada. Joyce Stuber and Marlene Van Ersel of the Netherlands taking on Heather Bansley and Brandy Wilkerson of Canada. For one team, there will be utter joy and it's joy in the picture. Will it be her and Marley? Smiles on their faces now. They'll be hoping to replicate that come the end of this one with a bronze medal. But it's going to be a tall order. It's going to be a tough task. Heather Bansley on the left and Brandy Wilkinson on the right of the picture. Two very good players. And both teams know this is going to be a test of their abilities. The weather conditions here, it's a little bit cloudy. The sun's really yet to make an appearance. It's not that windy, particularly down on the stadium court, well protected by the bleachers, the seating. Just about perfect for a game of beach volleyball. And the crowd filling up the stands nicely. Both teams had to get over the disappointment of not making it into the final. Firmly focused what's ahead of them here. Which is a chance to redeem themselves, a chance to get away. Time then to meet the officials in charge of this one. And upon the stand is uh, the first referee from Puerto Rico, Carlos Rivera. Which we just briefly saw, we're going to see him again in just a second. And oh, there he is. We will, uh, we will be officially introduced to the crowd here. A very experienced referee. And just like all the referees on the World Tour, know what they're doing. And we know when they've had a good game because we don't notice them. The second referee today, Priscilla Joachim from Brazil. Priscilla Joachim from Brazil! Marty Van Ness is going, no, no, it is that way, quite rightly so, because it is Canada coming out onto court first. Heather Bansley, who is 31 years of age, was actually born in London and uh, now lives in Toronto. Could have been playing for England or even Great Britain, but instead playing for Canada. 13 seasons, 95 tournaments, and $390,000 in prize money. A playing partner, another um, player who, whilst playing for Canada, not born in Canada, actually born in Lausanne, Switzerland, was Brandy Wilkerson, 26 years of age, and $125,000 in prize money for her. Both Bansley and Wilkerson with three gold medals on the tour in their careers. And now, about to come out onto court, is Marlene Van Ersel for the Netherlands, 31 years of age. From Breda lives in Amsterdam. 141 tournaments she's played in 17 seasons, four career wins, two FIVB World Tour title wins, and over half a million dollars in prize money. And for Joyce Stuber, just 21 years of age, from Gouda, lives in Denmark at the Hague. And uh, 1 meter 85, seven seasons for her, 31 tournaments, and had a career win in uh, Alzmeer in 2018, has $51,000 in prize money. And here comes the ball. Being droned in. And it's the Netherlands will be getting things underway. And it's the Netherlands in blue against Canada in white who are receiving this is the bronze medal match from the FIVB Beach Volleyball four-star event here in Itapema, Brazil. And first point goes away. Oh, Bansley and Wilkerson, nice little side act from Bansley. He's deciding not to block. Those of you who watched the semi-final matches 
will have uh, seen how that panned out and it was Joy Stuber who was the player that had to do all the signing out for the Netherlands. He was, as the was given that task for Canada. Doing exactly the same thing. Van Ersel now with the serve. And indeed, Bansley the target. That's a really good pickup from Bansley. And a brilliant side out. Wonderful serve from Van Ersel. Without a question. But uh, Bansley, full stretch, two hands on the ball, brings it back. And then a wonderful put up from Wilkerson. And just like that, after what looked like a really difficult situation, Canada have their side out. Wilkerson with her first serve. Trying to put Stuber under a bit of pressure. I'll take that. That's a really difficult play to have to make as a player because your partner is behind you. You're facing them. You can't see the net. The ball has then come up over your head. You've had to turn around, pick the ball up. You can't see the net in that situation. But she's got a really good idea of where it is. A little bit of luck, but she'll take it. And we're all square. There's a chance here now for the Netherlands. Van Eersel, well taken as well. Always a bit of a risk if you don't serve tough enough against Canada because Bansley can pop it up for Wilkerson to have the swing. However, Wilkerson didn't take full advantage of that. It was Van Eersel making a great dig. Two line block signaled as Stuber will serve and then go through to block. And no surprise, Bansley still the favourite to receive that ball. Good up from Van Eersel. Well, that's brilliantly played, and it completely mucked Wilkerson up as she's gone early, come down, and then suddenly finds the ball coming back with her, and then really didn't quite know what to do with it, because you can't volley that, you've got called for a carry or a double. And so, oh, what do I do? Oh, I don't know. Unfortunately, she panicked. Excellent block for Wilkerson, but the Netherlands are creating some really good opportunities in transition. And a real difference already in Marlene Van Ersel's defense. In the semi final match, she was, instead of turning, but instead of running through the ball to make the pickups, she was stopping and diving to try and make pickups and not getting the contact she would have wanted. But already we can see in this bronze medal match, she's running through the ball, running through the sand, and getting two hands on the ball, and has more control of the ball as a result. And it's putting the Netherlands in great transition opportunities. That's a little bit unfortunate. The ball up from Van Essel just too close to the net. And Wilkerson did very well to touch that after Stubbe had. Otherwise, it would have been an infringement and the Netherlands would have won the ball. Holding on to the lead at the moment. Van Ersel with the serve. It's so important on beach volleyball when you're contacting the ball, spiking and serving, that you have a nice high contact. And a good frame of reference for that is making sure that your elbow is coming past your ear and that means your hand is going to be above your head. If your hand's coming past your ear, you know you're contacting that ball too low. And if you're really unsure as to which you're doing, well, get someone to video it or video yourself, and then you can see exactly what's going on. Line block signaled against Wilkerson, and a cross-court block signaled against Bansley. Well, that was a tricky one because Stube signaled that she's blocking cross-court, so when she broke, she decided to break into the cross-court which made that rather easy then for Bansley to put that shot over the top of her. And Van Ersel then couldn't react. She's on the line a little bit too far for her to run. Some teams in that situation, even if they're blocking cross court, they'll break to the side of the court they're on. In other words, if I'm blocking on 
the right hand side that I'm blocking cross court I'll still break back to the line and let the player who was perhaps in the line or not fully in the line because it might set up slightly central then have a, a smaller run to get to the ball on the cross court if that's where the ball is rolled lots of permutations in for what is ten, ideally quite a simple game it's two on two it's three touches unless you blocked it then you only get two Unlike indoors, for those of you who are a little unsure of the rules for the beach, a few differences, a few notable differences are the teams change ends on multiples of seven, as we're seeing. As we have another look at that little pokey from Bansley, and the reason she has to pokey the ball is because you can't tip the ball on the beach, you can't use your fingers to control the ball. We'd be here for weeks otherwise, as teams just continually side it out. So you have to have more uh, control by going with the pokey, so playing the ball off your knuckles or off the very, very ends of your fingers, not off of the pads. The other difference with beach volleyball is the block counts as a touch. So if you make a touch and you get it back on your side, you only have two then to get it over. And the settings are a lot stricter and it has to be in your shoulder line. That is a great serve, just about as good as it gets from Joyce Stuber as she pushes Bansley away and deep from her partner and as Bansley didn't take a step to that ball she's turned and tried to play it she's been turned completely by the ball and that's a good leave and Canada will be pleased given that point an opportunity Bansley had read it just couldn't get round there quickly enough suspicion she was trying to play that with her right hand as well instead of going with her left no she went with her left just couldn't get there quickly enough so important that when you're running left you play the ball with your left hand if you're running to the right you play it with your right on extreme defense regardless of what's your preferred arm that you used to play volleyball with for example with some of that left-handed swing because she's a lefty if she was running to the right to play the ball on extreme deep she should play it with her right hand and the reason for that is the natural re movement of your hand is to come towards your body so even at, at any kind of touch is going to bring it back potentially towards your partner and so if you think about it if you go and then try and play it with your left running to your right it makes it all kinds of difficult in your body position. Nice play from Wilkerson. She gets the ball over the line. The team is adopting sort of different communication. For those of you that have been playing volleyball, beach volleyball for some years, generally would call the uh, the shot and then style. So for example, line over. Without any follow up. And nowadays, as we go into the technical timeout, it's very much a case of identifying the first line of defense. So, in which case, you'd say over because there is a block there. And then identifying where you, the uh, second line of defense is by saying where you want the ball to go away from that. So, for example, you might set your partner the ball and say over line because the block is there and the defender is sat in the cross court. So, you're giving Two very important pieces of information in a calm manner as well. Worse than Bansley. No say no one line, no one middle. So they know there's nobody there in front of them. They can have a swing on the ball and they're giving them a, a reference point as to where to play the ball as well. said all of that all the teams have their own methods of communication that works for them and the key to all of it is having communication that works under pressure and also under pressure with that serve and getting turned by the ball there's nothing to stop that ball from going off of her arms in a way she didn't create the backboard her arm swing was that that you would see a baseball player make as opposed as opposed to a golfer 
In other words, getting one shoulder under the other as you go to play the ball. Good swing from Wilkerson. That suited her very nicely to have a swing with the left hand off of Stuber. And Canada beginning to make some inroads into this first set now, opening up a two-point lead. Good serve. Those of you that were watching the semi final yesterday involving the Netherlands and the fact that Joyce Stuber was the player that was served in their uh, post match debrief and also a little bit of video analysis of watching the match, it was, became evident that Stuber had forgotten her line shot. And that's a really good shot from Van Ersel as she uses the block. Certainly something noticeable in this match already is Stuber is making use of that line shot. She's very good at it. And that can sometimes happen in the game. There's no coach there to remind you, to give you the instruction. It's all on you as a player. And there is an awful lot to take in. Such a challenging game, mentally and physically, beach volleyball. That's a good leave from Van Ersel. The Netherlands got their defence placed just about perfect. Saying, right, there's a little spot you can go after, but there's not much. And Canada unable to take it. So Netherlands back to within one. Strong rotation this as well for the Netherlands because Stuber is at the net. Cross-court block signalled against Bansley, and it was a line against Wilkerson, but the change-up not working. And the teams will change ends. Still quite an evenly poised first set, despite the fact that Canada opened up a three-point lead. The Netherlands have got that back to within two. They'll be siding out to bring it back to within one. A slight advantage with Canada because they could potentially, if the score keeps ticking over like this, just side out to win the set. So the Netherlands do have to find some break points, some points from their service, as opposed to just getting the side out points. And that is the beauty of beach volleyball the fact that even though it's side out in order to win a set in order to win a match you do actually have to win a point when your team is serving and that's not quite worked for van ersel really good to see though and looking at the technique of these beach volleyball players when you're on the beach and you go to swing on the ball you have to commit to a full swing and what I mean by that is a, an arms going all the way back coming all the way up and maximum jump because that gives you the opportunity to do exactly what Van Ersel has just done which is to swing hard on the ball and also she can then slow it down she can then play the shot she can then move the ball around after that but if you go in with the intention of I'm only going to be playing a shot so I don't commit to a full jump or full swing you're never going to be able to hit the ball hard and certainly not from a high enough point point. and it can sometimes be a problem sometimes you have in your mind oh I'm going to shoot this or I'm going to play a shot so you don't actually go with a full swing and then you can find yourselves in all sorts of trouble great side out from the Netherlands and they're now back on an even keel here Van Ersel will serve again. Oh, that's just fantastic. It might still stay in play, it does. Momentum back with Canada. Bansley looking for the point. Well played by Stuber, and now a chance for the Netherlands. Oh, that is just brilliant. That's the rally of the match so far. And it was all down to that chase from Van Ersel. And that play, left-handed, into the bottom of the net. That's played there on purpose because the ball came out the way it did. Then a really good pick-up again from Van Ersel and Stuber. And this is a smart play. No, I'm not going to block. Just pull off the net a little bit. And then finishes up with a wonderful line shot, the one shot that was lacking in the semis. The 
Netherlands now in the driving seat. Yeah, I got to be in the team left corner. I keep seeing her take a step, and that's throwing me off. But I'll just keep it short. All those people that okay, but sure, sure. Yeah, she's staying. Okay. Uh, yeah, keep it up with the deep line shot. Even when she's peeling, she couldn't get it, right? Full focus from Van Ersel. The Netherlands have weathered the storm here against Canada. They've got themselves a lead. That's a good continuation block. Another chance. Bit tight. Oh, what an angle that is from Wilkerson. And that's the beauty of having a left-handed hitter on the right side of court because they can open up those angles that normally you see on the left side from the right-handed hitters. And that was just... There's absolutely no chance at all for anybody to get that. Van Ersel would have had to have been stood on that acute angle and then it would have been an easy roll for Wilkerson to go to the line good leave Canada not taking their opportunities and just keeping the momentum with Netherlands at the moment we're into a critical phase now of this first set Netherlands want three points to get the job done. Canada won back. They're siding out to try and get level. And the pressure's on. Or is it? Because that is a very good line roll from Heather Bansley. We talk about pressure. The pressure is always only ever put on yourself by you in the most part or the perceived pressure you think you're under from the expectations of those around you. Well, they're having a little look at this. First glance, it looked like it was out. And Stuber's facing into court. She turns in the air a little bit, and as she's turned, she's hit that away from herself. Could have probably done with a slightly better shoulder turn to open up to have a, a better swing through the ball instead of hitting to the side of the ball. There's a chance now here, but it can only come back cross court. Good up from Van Ersel. Another chance for Bansley. Good break, good touch, good save. And it's still in play. Oh, that might have been going out. It was going out. Van Ersel maybe didn't know for sure, didn't give a call. Stuber couldn't see because she's got her eyes on the ball. And somehow Canada have turned it around and now have set point. Quite rightly, a timeout called by the Netherlands. Was this going out? Oh, yes, it was, wasn't it? Oh, dear. Van Ersel knew it as well. Just didn't give the call in time. And there's no way Stuber could have known. She's got her eyes on the ball. She's looking up. It's how they deal with this now. Let's put it behind them. Side out, side out. Oh, side out, get a point, get a point. And get another point if they can, but certainly if they can get a 20 all, then it's game back on again. First to two in front will win it. In terms of whether you're in the ascendancy or not, it can turn so quickly, you can lose your balance as it were so quickly. And suddenly find yourself in trouble and credit to Canada they got themselves in front they were pegged back they had themselves behind and now they're back in front again they have set point it's Bansley with the serve Wilkinson's at the net and Stuber well doesn't even have to worry about the side out that's a gift for the Netherlands the only consolation for Canada is they have this one chance to side out and take the set in regulation
after that, it's going to get interesting if Van Ersel and Stuber can take this point. Line block signaled both sides. Oh, that's a great serve. Bit of scrambling going on here. And Stuber's onto it. Chance to save the set. Oh, no! She's not done it again. Going with the line shot, it was the right shot, but not hitting through the ball. Just have a look at her contact on this, and we're going to see it from the wrong side from that point of view, but it looks like she hits across the ball here, and you can see that with the side spin that's got put on it, and it's just helped to carry it away from the line. First set goes the way of Canada. Stats then from that first set. Opponents' errors. Canada were given seven by the Netherlands, and the Netherlands were given six by Canada. Here are the highlights from the set. Canada took the opening set, 21-19, set two now underway. Canada with the serve. And it's a must-win set situation for the Netherlands. Good angle from Stuber. There are times when looking at uh, Stuber, that she doesn't have that full swing as if she's going to be able to attack the ball with maximum power it's already you have that view that it already looks like she's going to be going to play the shot very different when Van Ersel goes in she's always full on full swing full jump opens the shoulders keeps the hand high and that's another important trait with good hitting on the beach is the hand stays high because you might need to, to play the ball early. Unfortunately, that one was a little bit too tight to the net, and Wilkerson just closed the gap here. There's no room. You see how, how close her hands get to that ball. She's on that ball, just split second after Van Ersel. It's going nowhere but straight down. And again. Wilkerson having an impact at the net and Canada getting an early lead in this second set. Deep breath. You'll notice that Wilkerson has a unique serving style. And actually, it's a noticeable style, isn't it? The way she holds the ball out in front of her. But every player at this level has a pre-serve routine that doesn't falter. They get their information about what's happening in the block. And then, which uh, Van Ersel's just taken on, then she goes into her pre-serve routine looking to deliver the ball that she wants. Oh, that was close. It looked a little bit more in than out. Get a good look here. Oh, no, it is just out, isn't it? The sand splash is what's caught the line. And the referee quite rightly going to have a look. He'll be, no doubt, saying what we were able to see from that slow motion, that the ball was out. And it's disappointing for Van Ersel, but without the aid of the challenge system and the super slow-mo we'll never know for sure whether the ball impacted down on the line there was no line movement oh that's brilliant it's see as well that's a really good play from van ersel and for those of you who find yourself in that situation she's able to play that ball by moving her hand on the angle the way she did to the left having hands that are awake 
so important. And you will see that when, when players are setting the ball, it's all from the hands pretty much and that they're awake and doing what you want to do on the pokies and on spiking as well the hands are awake they're the thing they're, they're what is contacting the ball and making those changes to the ball's direction and so on and the same should be of blocking your hands need to be alive in blocking you're leading your arms with your hands because you want to get your hands on the ball and that's exactly what uh, wilkerson has been trying to do you don't want to be blocking and pushing with your shoulders or with your elbows and have your hands asleep. It's an aggressive action. You're trying to get your hands on the ball. It's not a defensive one. Nice swing from Stuber. Bansley will be a little disappointed because she was just outside the block shadow but nearly not taking enough cross court. If you're the cross court defender, it's difficult to see why you would leave more of the cross court open. You'd ideally want to be making sure that the cross court and to your right in that situation is not going to be uh, somewhere they can go and then you'd be wanting to move back inside and get ready the chase line. And again, that is just an incredible angle from Stuber. It doesn't matter that Bansley had read that one. She was never going to get it. That's world-class cut shot from Joy Stuber. And the Netherlands are back to within one. Good dig. Well, it's still in play. Wilkerson may well be seeing double at the moment. She certainly was then because both players were onto that ball. Oh, that is just phenomenal. Stood on the sand. And Marlene Van Hersel rolls that ball right onto the line. What a rally that was. Wilkerson had no idea where the ball was going after it hit her in the cap. And then there's no way she's going to get that. She thinks it's out, but it's just brilliantly played to the line. Canada need a breather. They've called timeout. will have the serve. The Netherlands picked up a couple of points to put themselves back in this second set. That was always going to be favourable for Joyce Stuber to get her hands onto that one. She did well to wait though until Bansley touched the ball first. And that's an important factor of beach volleyball. I've blocking in general on the beach or indoors. You can only get your hands across the net into your opponent's court to block the ball when they are attacking. And they have to be attacking the ball. And they have to touch it before you do. And even if it's being dug over and it's the second ball, it's not an attacking ball, it's off someone, and you play it on their side, potentially the referee could call you for playing the ball on the opponent's side as we have a look at this shot again. Stuber has quite a, a languid arm swing. It's quite relaxed, not the dynamic, fast arm swing that you see from 
Van Ersel in attack, although Van Ersel's arm swing for her jump serve is more like a block jump, a block blocking arm swing, like uh, slightly bent elbows. Doesn't attack the ball with the same vigor she does when spiking. You see it again here, it's her arms just slightly bent as she goes after the ball. Wilkerson full arm swing from her up and attacks the ball and no one taking away the heat either in block or in defense all the lines officials waving their flags because Stuber's played the ball into the antenna. And again, for those of you new to the sport, that red and white pole, a barber's pole, is an extension of the sideline. And if you hit it, it's the ball is out of play. If you go outside it or over it, the ball is out of play. Better swing that time from Stuber. But again, she, her line shots where she's, uh, she's drifting in, changing her body position, so she was leaning to the left to hit to the right. So important that she does that, as she did with that last play, she hits through the ball. So hits it, if you imagine the clock face, hits it right at the center of the clock face at towards 12 o'clock and not hitting the ball at around nine o'clock. And that's a shame, right in between Van Ersel and Stuber. Canada creeping back into the set. court to work with for Stuber. See so she's uh, with that her left arm her non-hitting arm just drops slightly to the side of her again it's another thing that can cause issues under pressure in terms of contact and height of contact. Nice play from Van Ersel. Again, high arm, quick swing. Got that swing away before Wilkerson pressed to make the block. Her now moment was well after the ball had gone past her. What I mean by now moment is the moment you press to get on the ball. But ideally, when you're blocking, and if you can block the way that Wilkerson can, the way that Pavan can, the way that Kleinman can on the beach. Whatever you get across the net, you're getting, a, you're getting, sorry, whatever you're getting above the height of the net, you're putting straight across the net. So you're not going up and pressing, you're pressing, 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 pressing as much as you can, you're getting as close to the ball as you can, as quickly as you can, in order that you can cut down all the angles. You won't be able to jump and get your uh, shoulders above the net with your hands right up in front of you. You're not going to block anything unless it's hit at you, and even then, it's not going to go straight down unless they're trying to hit the ball straight down you have to get as close to the ball as you can and far across the net as you can. that's the ideal scenario of course if you think there's a shot coming and you know there's a shot coming and some of the best players in the world do so they will jump with their hands up in the air they're looking to swap the ball back to practically throw it back that's a really good play and a little bit of luck for Canada. That was a lovely block from Stuber. She's jumped into the cross court. She's made a touch on the ball. Hands above the net, not across the net though, which is why it's come back where it has. And then that fell so kindly for Wilkerson to be able to do that. Cruel blow for the Netherlands. <laughs> block out the chief from Stuber.
close again. Canada are not going away. And they are breathing down the neck of the Netherlands here. Oh, that's a good leave. That was a very good serve, which was uh, trying to get Joyce Stuber to bite. touch well read by Van Ersel chance here for the Netherlands Bansley knew that was going line she'd seen something she went there very early however she's unable to capitalize tries to go on a very cute angle cross court could see that Van Ersel was already in the cross and couldn't get it back to the line slightly out of position body wise to try to play that Interesting watching that break from the net from Joyce Stuber. Unfortunately, the Netherlands don't take the point, but you would have noticed that she broke from the net, facing away from the court, away from her partner. There is a school of thought that says when you break from the net, you break and open up into the court. So anything that hits you might be going back towards your partner. And uh, certainly there are coaches who firmly believe that is the only way you should break from the net. There's another school of thought that says you just do what you think you need to do. And if you can see a situation where actually it's better for you to break in the position you did again, Stuber breaking on the cross court then. So in order for her to get to that cross court angle, it's more natural for her to break and have her back to her partner. But it, for her, she would be feeling it opens up the opportunity to make that dig more comfortably if it's hit towards that cross court position. If it was hit down the middle and went uh, behind her shoulders, it would be very difficult for her to try and play it. Good up. Canada take the point with a little help from the net off of Van Ersel's swing, which got Bans in a good position. And then you can see from Bansley, she's not that tall. She has to go with a full swing. She has to try and get as high as she can. And in so doing, she's able to really swing hard on the ball if nobody's there to put a block up. Netherlands are doing everything they need to to stay in front and keep themselves on course to take the set. Line block signaled by Van Ersel against both uh, Bansley and Wilkerson. Stuber, it looked as if she was a little bit unsure as to whether or not to go in, try and make it to block, or stay back and try and dig. In the end, she ended up in no position to do either. Always a difficult one. If you don't serve tough enough and you're the player coming in to block to stop the other team hitting on two, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. 
Stuber making sure of that one. And Netherlands now just two away from leveling up the match. Pickup. Van Ersel running through the ball and finishing it off, and it's set point now for the Netherlands. First set point is saved, but Canada know that uh, they're up against it now because the Netherlands have several opportunities here to side out and send this bronze medal match into a tiebreaker. Fine block signaled against Stuber. Looks like it's jumping into the cross against Van Ersel, but it's Stuber who has the swing for the set and she takes it. First time of asking. And the Netherlands take the second set, 21-17. It's one all here in its payment. It's now a race to 15 to see who'll take bronze. Four blocks for Canada. Still wasn't good enough. It's now a race to 15 to see who will be on the podium. Teams will change ends on multiple of five points. You still have to win by two clear points. There's no technical timeout in the third set. But both teams have a timeout should they need it. So that clears up the rules in case anyone was unsure. And now we can get down to the business of seeing who's going to get bronze. Stuber with the serve for the Netherlands. <laughs> nice little change up from the Netherlands. First time Van Ersel's had a swing on two. Not sure if it was intentional or whether the situation meant that was all she could do. Either way, it's worked. They have a point. Van Ersel now with the serve. Stuber at the net, ready to block. Bansley the likely target. Chase is on. It's free ball here for the Netherlands. Oh, that's a massive swing from Stuber. She does hit the ball from a high position. You just have to wonder, don't you, how much higher and how much harder she could be hitting the ball if she put in a full arm swing. And really drove up, was more dynamic with what she was doing. And working on her non-hitting arm as well to put her in a good position to stay high. And then the shot-making selection would be oh, exquisite. Nice work from Bansley. That time Stuba got her hands up, but not across. Which is why the ball sailed out of court. Wilkerson with the serve. Again, the same pre-serve routine. Never changes. Means she knows it's reliable under pressure in tough situations. Good rea reactions there from uh, Bansley. Oh, that's a really well played shot. 
right over the top of Stuba and away from Van Ersel. And it's Canada who have edged in front at the first end change. Good leave. The spatial awareness of these players is sublime. They know exactly where they are in relation to the court, and they know from the split second it leaves the hand of the server or attacker or whatever's happening as to the flight of that ball, which is why the jump float serve is really probably one of the most effective serves in the women's game because the ball is coming on a flat line. Therefore, working out the trajectory of where it's going to land is far more difficult than a ball that's going on a loop because you've got that start point. You see the arc, you can work out where it's coming down. Nice work. And Van Ersel goes with a non-dominant hand, showing that she's amphibious. Good touch. It looks like that's going to have to come over. Unfortunately, though, for Stuber, Wilkerson again, right across the net, saying, right, there's no way you can go here. If it hits me, it's going down. the edge. And they've increased their lead as Van Ersel gets tucked up at the net. Time to change ends again. Good play from Wilkerson, just waited to see what was going to happen. Better and better for Canada now. A little bit of a worry for the Netherlands, and they call timeout. Good work from Stuber getting the block out. Slightly quicker set from Van Ersel. Another day may have been called for a double, but nowadays the uh, referees like to let the ball fly, like to let the game continue. And unless it is a very obvious double touch, they tend to let the play continue. And play continues in favour of the Netherlands. They get the side out. Still two behind, but within touching distance and still with an opportunity to get back into this one. So they 
outside out from Wilkerson. Netherlands just keeping her honest, making sure that she's tuned in. Not a bad thing to do, although maybe the serve could have been a bit tougher. Easy to say when you're not actually playing. Bansley now with the serve. Good call. Easy lead. And this is where the Netherlands will perhaps try to force things a little bit here. They don't want Canada to keep the lead as they get into double figures. As we're only going to 15. Line block signalled and does appear as if that perhaps a ball down the middle to test both players. Let's see what Van Russell comes up with. One right across onto Wilkerson. It's even better because as the ball clipped the net, it just popped up and caught Wilkerson on the shoulder. What a way to get back into this one. A touch day serve for the Netherlands. It's eight ball and it is game on. Oh, well played. Wilkerson had a little look to suggest perhaps she was going to go to the line. And Van Ersel then said, right, I've seen you, I'm off. And she made that move just a split second too early. right to where Van Ersel was waiting but she didn't quite realize that Stuber was also there to pounce on that one and all of a sudden Canada back in front good chase from Stuber good up from Bansley Oh, again, another cruel blow for the Netherlands because that ball could have gone anywhere. But Bansley's managed to get it right up on the net to where Wilkerson's waiting. And the Netherlands out of position, no one could get to the ball. Nice play from uh, Van Ersel. She'll take the yellow card time delay. She was doing that on purpose just to try and slow things down a bit because the Netherlands have no timeouts left. get their side out but once again they find themselves chasing Canada here two points behind at the end change Canada in a great position knowing they're siding out to go three in front and could potentially just side their way out to a bronze medal Good work from Stuber, eyes only on the ball. And uh, Bansley's not happy, she's saying that Stuber played that before she did. That was on her side to do that, that was fine. Now the Canadians playing for a little bit of time, not given, Stuber with the serve. Well played by Bansley, middle of the court. Very difficult for the blocker to take any kind of angle, really. Bansley with the presence of mind to put it away from where Van Essel was defending. We're going to go after Van Essel here, line block called. from Van Ersel to find that angle. One big serve. Netherlands are back in it. Oh, ho, 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 that is a big serve. That is an absolute belter from Van Ersel. 
ace serve onto the baseline, right down the middle, no chance for Canada. Almost got another one, trying to take Bansley away from her partner. Another end change, probably the last end change. As this match comes to its conclusion here, Canada in front. Netherlands looking for side act to draw level. Weak rotation for Canada. Wilkerson having to serve and come to the net needs to put pressure on the Netherlands to stop them going over on two. Oh, that's a really good effort. And so was that. Better chance now for the Netherlands. Van Ersel, though, only with cross court power. Good pick up from Bansley. And she's able to deliver that ball down the middle. That's a massive point for Canada. It brings up match point for Bansley and Wilkerson. And despite the best efforts of the Netherlands, they couldn't get the side out they needed. to keep the Netherlands in it. Well, what a pick up from Bansley. Stupid to keep the Netherlands in it. And she has done. Too far for Bansley to go. It's not over yet. 13-14. And just like it was for Canada in the first set, they had that one opportunity to side out to win the set. They've got it again here now. The one opportunity in regulation play to side out, but this time to win the match. However, not before Canada decided to use up their timeout. for the Netherlands it's been a massive learning curve for Joyce Stuber to find herself in the situation she's in plenty of positives to take from this but still an opportunity to win side out needed here uh, sorry points needed from serve here side out for Canada they win the game Stuber with the serve will run through to block Still in play. Oh, and they've saved it. Stuber gets it down. It's 14 all. It's now the first to two clear to take this match and to take the bronze medal. Great pickup from Van Ersel. Held her ground. And then Stuber puts it on the sand. It's another good serve. Good touch. Chance for a match point here. Oh dear, the pace taken off it by the net. Bansley can have a swing. Oh, but she's overcooked it. Would you believe that? An unforced error from Bansley, who's had an almost flawless match. And now, just like that, it's match point for the Netherlands. Well, those of you at home watching and supporting the Netherlands, I'm surprised we've got any fingernails left. Side out achieved by Wilkerson. 15 all. We're going to have another end change. Both teams now have had match point opportunities, but neither team has been able to capitalize. The best chance was with Canada, but they were unable to get their side out. Bansley now with the serve. The Netherlands siding out to bring up another match point if they can. It's all eyes off the scoreboard here. It's just focus on side out, focus on the swing. And that was really well played from Stuber. Back to what she does best. And perhaps an opportunity missed for Canada because under pressure, Stuber's gone and swung on the cross court. And Wilkerson not taking it away. Match point number two now. 
for the Netherlands. Good rotation for them. Van Ersel with the serve. Stuber waiting at the net. It's going to be a swing here. Van Ersel for the match. Oh, what a block! What a play from Wilkerson. It looked as if it was going to be good enough. Van Ersel going with the roll. And then Wilkerson said, no, you're not. Goodness me. What a finish to this match. Wilkerson with the serve. Ball square again, 16 apiece. Good ball in from Stubert. Somehow kept in play. Oh, that's really well done because Wilkerson's having to scramble. High hands defense is fine. The set's okay. And the swing, oh, it's not made it. Would you believe it? And now it's match ball for Canada. Wilkerson with the serve. Bansley's not, uh, she's just put closed fists and just go after the ball here. It doesn't work though. Stuber has gone cross court again. And she's put it on the floor. It's 17 all again. The momentum and the advantage is slightly with Canada because they're serving at, uh, siding out now for match point. And it's Stuber to serve. High floater pushing Bansley deep. And Wilkerson gets the ball down on two. And we're going to have another end change. We are just going to keep on going until somebody can get too clear. Stube once again. Oh, yes. Saw that opportunity, didn't panic. And Van Ersel getting the crowd on side. Ball square once again. Van Ersel, she had one huge serve, an ace serve that brought the Netherlands right back into this third set. Another one here could be the one potentially to get him a bronze medal. Oh, it's not going to be like that, though. Didn't really commit to it. And a gift for Canada as they have another match point chance. Van Ersel to keep the Netherlands in it, and she's done that brilliantly. Nice break from the net from Wilkerson, but she's uh, not a Talita and she's not a Juliana and was unable to guide that ball back to her partner. Likely the best two breakers off the net with high hands defense, Telita and Juliana of Brazil. Juliana now retired from the game, but one of the greatest players to have played on the beach. And in fact, she has been playing. It was uh, She was out of the game for a while, but was playing earlier here in Interpema this week, which is great to see. Oh, that's a big pickup. Stuber doesn't panic. Van Ersel, oh, brilliant, off the block and away. And on we go. We've probably gone to regulation. We're actually now into the two points clear as if we were playing the 21. There's a look of concentration from Van Ersel. She's going with the jump float serve. Making sure that Canada have to play it. Oh, and she's gone too early to the line. And Bansley saw it. Great work from Heather Bansley. Van Ersel cheated, went to the line early. And the cross court just opened up then for Bansley. 
really solid siding out from both teams at what is such a critical moment in the match. Both teams with their eyes just on what's in front of them and away from the scoreboard. That's a wonderful set. Is it off the block? No, it isn't, and it's all over now. It's come to an end, and it's a bronze medal for Canada. They have beaten the Netherlands by two sets to one in an epic game of beach volleyball here at Oh, That's wonderful to see. Rivalries, yes. Friends, definitely. Magnificent game. This is how it was done. Stuber, slightly off balance, trying to put that ball away cross court. Didn't get it off the block. And it is Canada who take bronze. Confirmation of the score. It's Bansley and Brandy Wilkerson who've won the game. 21-19, 17-21, 22-20. An epic game of volleyball. And we should be able to hear from our winners any second now. How was this difficult decision? Wow. <laughs> it was. It was a battle. We knew that it would be. Netherlands is having a great tournament. And um, it was, you know, after yesterday's loss, we wanted to come out and fight and win that bronze medal. So I'm really proud of our team for doing that this morning. Your first medal was here in Itapema last year. Now again. Yes, uh, Itapema is very special to us. Uh, Last year was a battle as well against Brazil, and so we knew it was going to be a tough tournament coming here, but we were so excited to be here with all of the people and the fans, and this tournament is so well run, so we're happy to have another matching medal. <laughs> what was the best moment in this match? Uh, I think the end of the game when we were just fighting, and uh, Brandy and I were staying tight as a team and staying connected, and um, yeah, it's... Uh, those moments are really fun, and that's why we play, and it was a really exciting match, I think, for us and also for the fans. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Very well said from Bansley. The s nervousness and excitement are the same feelings, and she's saying, I wasn't nervous, I was excited to play, and that's a really good sentiment. And what was a really good game. Here are the highlights.